I'm here in Williamsburg, Virginia, where Alquist has completed the printing of their Habitat for Humanity home. This is going to be given to a single mother and her son who will live in this 3D printed house as a fresh start. This should give them a sturdy foundation from which they can grow. 3D printing aims to solve a lot of problems. And one of the things I talked about with Alquist CEO, Zach Mannheimer, is how much they improved from the first house they did in Richmond to this house here in Williamsburg. He estimates there's a 20 to 30% improvement in their efficiency and therefore cost. Now moving forward, they're going to continue to see improvements, uh, maybe 10% at a time, 5% at a time after that. And eventually the changes will become so incremental, you might not notice the difference from one house to an, the next, but it's really this learning curve that's required for this industry to scale up into something that could truly become meaningful worldwide. The winters don't get too harsh here in Virginia, so they don't require a ton of insulation. They have two inches of Kingspan foam lining the entire foundation of the building. In between the inner and outer walls, they have insulation at some points, other times cold joints concrete on concrete. In a much more cold region, you might want to avoid the interior and exterior walls touching. But again, here in Virginia, that's not really a problem. Like the other house by Alquist, the exterior walls are the only thing printed here. So the interior and roof are going to be traditionally framed with uh, lumber. If you've enjoyed watching this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also consider signing up for the virtual village of 3D printed houses. Every project I visit, this one included, I take a digital 360 Matterport tour that you can view at home from your own mobile or desktop device. It allows you to, in these tours, you can click around, look up, down, left, right, and see every angle. There's approaching 20 tours with over 20,000 square feet of tourable space. And for a limited time only, I'm going to offer 15% off with the code EARLYBIRD. Pretty soon, not only will the discount expire, but the prices are going to be going up as well. So make sure to get in early and lock in your lower rate. So uh, here we are at uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. This is, was our second, uh, second project here at Alquist. This home was printed, I think it was uh, two weeks faster than our, our Richmond house. Uh, in active print time, that was a that was a cut down of six hours, and that was simply because we were able to print much faster here. Uh, we were more comfortable with the material, and we were able to push what OSHA is, allows uh, on an active job site, which is 250 millimeters per second. If you go over that uh, threshold, you have to add uh, fences and security measures, which we plan on doing in the future. We're trying to get up to the 500. Uh, millimeter mark, uh, millimeter per second uh, speed rather, and so uh, the Richmond house that was printed in 28 hours over uh, six weeks. This one was printed in 18 hours of active print time over four weeks. We're trying to get down to a 18 hour print and ideally that's over a one, a one week period where the first day is set up, you have three days of active printing, and you have a one day dismantle. This printer is gonna be dismantled into several pieces, broken down into seven pieces, and put on a semi-trailer and trucked back to Richmond. So, like walk around, I'll follow you with the camera and you can just talk about different things, uh, like things that got installed, and yeah. lentils maybe, things that went well, things mm -hmm. that didn't go well. Yeah, so, uh, this this house was printed over seven seven active days. That was uh, the first first day was 20 layers. That was the the slab uh, the slab print. So you print the two uh, two white walls, and that's backfill with traditional grout. Um, the next day we had heat issues. We got around seven or eight layers down before the heat uh, kind of kind of derailed us and at a certain point in a day uh, we try shooting for 10-11 uh, if things go bad past that when you're working in 95 degree weather it's more economical just to uh, take, a, take a pause for the day and uh, start back up in the morning uh, because you have more success. A 36 layer day and a 34 layer day that equates to around uh, 
a little over two feet each day. We like to have a very short day for our last, uh, our last segment, a 20, uh, 20 layer day and a 10 layer day. Make sure everything is graded, everything is smooth, everything is measured correctly. I, on this house, we had an inch and a half uh, layer compression over the first 125 layers. So all the walls connected, uh, as you can see below below the windows, and those are it's like a uh, it's like a U uh, a U shape pattern that sits directly below the windows to support uh, the window and the frame and connect the uh, two walls in, in as little points as possible to make sure it's fully thermally broken. The um, this design was a little a little different in in Richmond. We had just uh, small connecting brackets that we printed as well. But this this uh, this design is connected into the inner wall, and so there's a larger um, there's less travel movements and more time actively printing. When you have large travel like that, you have to worry about material. Uh, because the material you're expending or extruding is is less during this time, so you have to change your pump speed, which um, concrete doesn't like changing changing uh, in that fashion. What's your favorite wall in this house? Good question. This section, I believe this is, uh, it's probably one of the kitchen rooms, uh, but I, I, I love this wall. This technically ends up being uh, the best and favorite because I am stationed on the outside of the wall. And so this is the one I have the best visibility on. Um, as far as least favorite, interior doorways, they're always tricky because there's so so little printing that's done there. And so the pickup points are closer. And so you have to get it really spot on. Um, one thing you can kind of notice, there's banding of where we have to take the flaps off. That's when we add a ladder reinforcement. Uh, and so you can't have your interior uh, interior flap on during those times. So we keep take a uh, take a flap off for one layer, then add a uh, add a add the flaps back on. So that's a really clear demonstration of what the flaps do. Yeah, exactly. And so it allows you to maintain uh, the correct wall width. In Richmond, we are closer to a two and a half three inch uh, wall, and that's just the slump and the expanding of the concrete. And uh, this was uh, it was a fixed two inch uh, 50 millimeter wall as per designed and that uh, saves money saves cleanup time uh, there's always an issue that people have with the flat with the uh, sausage look if you would call like the traditional layer lines is cl a cleanup and dust getting inside those and a, a harder a harder thing to seal obviously in the window sections as well. So um, we're going to try, continue uh, testing different styles of flaps and, uh, and I think that's the, the route we'll be taking as a company. What's the significant change you want to make from this project to the next project and how much of a decrease in cost or time would that be like? So one of, the, one of the main things we're trying to figure out, motorized uh, pulley system and that will we currently have one individual that is stuck on hose management, and so on, on the farthest point, uh, you have you have a large stretch, which can cause a kink and change the material properties, as well as if you're extremely close to the to the pulley system, you have a sag and you don't want anything touching your walls, and then just improve on our da daily layer count. We're trying to shoot, like we had a great few days and we're able to print 34 and 36 layers. Um, so that's definitely our, our high point as, as a company. Uh, we hope to have more of those days. And another thing is just having more efficiency of, okay, the printer is on site for uh, one week. In that week, all days are printing at a expected rate and not have uh, some of the issues we had on this, um, on this print, we had some uh, software glitches and talking to, uh, to our manufacturer in Denmark. It was, uh, if you couldn't reach them by 2, 3 p.m. Eastern time, it's, it's just hard getting things uh, 
finished on hand. That will be changing, uh, I believe, our manufacturers setting a headquarters up with by the end of the year, so uh, by next this time next year, or even in the spring, we'll have a more direct line, which will obviously help things. And then just experience, you know, uh, the more houses you print, the the better you're obviously gonna get at, at them. Um, what happened there? So this was one of the one of the issues we had on site. Uh, it was on. Close to one of our last days, um, the the Y columns hit the top of the printer on on one of the things. The uh, we were in the wrong workstation, so it started going higher than it was intended to be. That caused uh, the drive pulley in the electronical box on the Z column, which drives the printer up and down and creates allows it to move. Uh, one of the gears sheared off, so in order to repair it, we had to <coughs> angle grind out that section, uh, get replacement bolts, and it was it was really interesting because we we, we had we had the issue on site, and it was clearly a large issue. So we called our manufacturer, and they're like, "Okay, we'll see what we can do." Uh, after around an hour, we we're like, "Can we just cut it, cut into this, and make the repair ourselves?" Because it was. It was to a point where if we couldn't figure out a way to get to that panel, we have to take the leg away and cause cause large delays in this project. Luckily, we were able to get in a day. We had uh, Matthias, he was our uh, tech support agent at the time, uh, call us the next day asking follow-up questions, and we said, oh yeah, we fixed it. And they were they were really shocked. And so a lot of this is all about adapting. You know, you have issues that no one's really had before on a on a construction site um, but luckily that was a, a quick fix uh, a twelve dollars worth of screws and it was good to go at the beginning of every morning we do dry runs and that is simply uh, printing of what you're going to be printing that day without any material flow through that is simply so then you are aware where the nozzle is make sure it lines correctly with your roll and that you're at the right, right height, and so you don't have any issues when you have material in the hose, uh, because it's a lot easier to fix and change things when you're not having to run against the clock uh, with material.